Hi, I'm the Casual Spaceman and welcome to my channel once again. Well, it seems I've been set a bit of a challenge and the challenge comes from Paul on the Plane. Check out his channel and you'll see he's got every conspiracy going, including space is fake. But for the challenge, here's an explanation. Okay, so what exactly is the challenge? Well, Paul on the Plane and his Globebuster friends think that the flag that they planted on the moon at Apollo 17 was wet. Yes, you've heard it right. The flag that they planted on the moon by the very last Apollo mission, Apollo 17, was wet. Okay, fine, we'll do that. We'll debunk it. But how did the challenge come about? For those of you who follow my channel regularly, you'll notice from my last video of the unknown commanding us that we should not pay any more attention to right the hand. Well, this is where Paul first commented with I really have appreciated the time you've taken to lay out and walk your subscriber base through the evidence to provide an alternative narrative. Keep it up, we're all watching and cheering you on. Please also see the channel comment I left. Open invite sir, anytime, all the best. Paul of the Plane. Well, I thought that was very polite and generous of him. I may even commented later on that he subscribed to my channel. So I thought I'd go and have a look and see exactly what he's invited me to. And here it is. Hey Spaceman, thanks for your comment on one of my videos. I've come over and subbed your channel. Very nice of him. And I look forward to your Apollo Moon videos in response to mine. If I'm honest, I can't wait to see how you debunk the wet flag on Apollo 17. All the best, Paul of the Plane. P.S. Open invite to come on my weekly live radio show or my bod bro uh, podcast. Just shoot me an email at... I thought Paul had taken the decency to blank out your email because I wasn't sure whether it was a private email or a public one so I hope you appreciate that take care he says oh, that's very generous and kind of him and the invite to the debate sounded kind of like it might have been a kind of debate that was calm polite and considerate you know and that kind of debate and I thought well yeah I know a little bit about this subject so perhaps I will sounded like my kind of debate but then I thought I'd go back to his original comment because there's one thing in there that I didn't quite fully understand what he meant. And he said, I really have appreciated the time you've taken to lay out and walk your subscriber base through the evidence to provide an alternative narrative. I wasn't sure what he meant by that, either that or he didn't really get the humour of the original video. So I said, thanks for replying, but alternative narrative to what? A perfectly reasonable question, you would think. Now, to be fair, in my channel comment, I did reply and I said that I perhaps I would come to his podcast or his radio show and debate this issue. But then he came back with this reply. Oh, come on, bro. Don't play dumb that the moon landings legitimately happened as we were told. Come on, give it your best shot. Debunk my faking space videos. Love to see how you explain away the moisture on the moon at 10 times to the negative 11 tour and the Valanum belts. I wonder if he actually knows what that tour actually means. And the same rover in three missions. Bring it brah. Come on my show with your best stuff. I'll give you an audience of 3,000 live listeners. You game. Well, brah. No, I'm not game. I know a setup when I see it and I'm not falling for that one. So I'll debunk it on my channel. So I went into Paul the Plane's channel and lo and behold, they've got a video on this very issue with him and his Globebuster friends. So. What have him and his Globebuster friends got to say about this so-called wet flag? A picture of the uh, infamous uh, Apollo 17 flag up there. Uh -uh. <laughs> well, right there, I just wonder what um, my American friends um, think of that little snide comment about the American flag, or infamous American flag, and then the little chuckle. Um, so, if the, any of my American friends, just comment below, and maybe... Let us know what you think about that comment. Uh, that particular uh, image has been uh, viewed by millions of people a year over the last 45 years. It's uh, up on walls, probably 10 or 12 feet high. It's in, photographed in books and magazines and everywhere else. And uh, of course, it's uh, the American symbol as well. 
your very reverent symbol. And everybody that has analyzed and studied this photo in any way, shape, or form has never looked at it and seen that it's wet. Looked at it and never seen that it's wet. Well, I wonder why. Yeah. It quite clearly is. That, that is amazing because it absolutely is. You can see along here where the arrows are, the line between the dry and the wet part of the flag. And of course, it's very obvious over here. It's even crinkled up almost like it just came out of a washing machine or a it's, rainstorm. It's in, it's in the uh, red and white as well. It's harder to see. Okay, I'll stop it right there because I can debunk this almost straight away. Okay, this flag is made of nylon. Nylon, first of all, is a very shiny material. Okay, and secondly, when the flag is all packed up with the poles and the struts and what have you, it's all crinkled up and folded up. And as you can see, there's lots of creases. What they can actually see with the, these arrows that are pointing out is just a crease mark. Another thing you need to take into consideration is the camera. Um, the camera is fairly overexposed with a lot of white and what have you. Um, and also the only light source, which is the sun. And so the camera is going to pick up different areas of shade um, the, the, from the creases and what have you. Some of them are going to reflect more light because of the angle of the camera and some aren't. And some are going to be shade areas are going to be shaded and some are not. So, no it's not wet um, and there's no evidence of any wet even in the red and white part either and also if you think that there was going to be part of it was wet if you look at the flag the stars are clearly embroidered if it was really going to be wet then the wetness would be in and around those stars but let's play on and see what else they've got to say mm -hmm. If you see almost in the center, in the close-up part there, the, on the first full band down, just the bottom half of the red is is actually water as well on that, uh, yeah, right in that section there. There and here, yep. Yeah. No, no, it's not. It, 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 all they've got at the moment, it looks wet. Okay, they're going to see this to make, they're just going to say it looks wet. That's all they have at the moment. They've got no demonstrable proof whatsoever that it's wet and the reason why they haven't is because it isn't yeah you you can see it if you study it the the harder you study it the more you see it and of course when you realize that it's wet and it was raining the entire set is wet no the entire set is not wet um what they're trying to suggest here is um that this is all mocked in an outside set which goes against what Many both, um, flat earthers believe and um, moon hoaxes believe is it was actually done in a studio set and what these people are saying is it was actually done outside. Which makes it even, it's, it's impossible anyway, but makes it incredibly more difficult. Think about it, if this was done outside, how is the sky so dark? But I can assure you, in 1972, there was no CGI enabled to do that. None. None whatsoever. And if you look at my previous video where I dumbbunk some moon hoaxes, the hoaxes, um, there's um, a guy, a female filmmaker, shown on that video, who actually says it was impossible to fake, to stage the moon landings. Because they simply did not have the film or television or camera technology enabled to do it. It was impossible. But anyway, let's see what else they've got to say. And, and that kind of goes back to we, you know, when it comes to the this this conspiracy, right? There's there's many schools of thought. Was this all shot in a studio, in a Hollywood basement? But you know, when you start looking at some of the other evidence here that Scott's uncovered, where you've got standing water on some of the equipment, you no, there's no standing water at all. Um, and l later on in the video, they show what they think or what might look like, there could be water there in some of the equipment, but it just simply isn't. You've got mold growing and you've got a wet flag, just to name a few. No, there's no mold growing. They're mistaking mold with uh, moon dust. Simply put, the uh, moon dust was absolutely everywhere. It was all over the astronauts, it was all over the equipment, um, and it was actually causing um, a bit of a problem. 
um, and you'll see later on the video that um, they uh, they are completely covered in, in moon dust. That's all it is. Um, and in my previous video again uh, with debunking the moon hoax um, will actually show that the um, particles of moon dust are very jagged um, and very uneven, which enables the dust to actually cling to um, the, all the different materials and uh, different things that they're actually using on the moon. Um, very much so on the um, on the astronaut space suit as well. It's clear that this was shot outside and over a long period of time where the weather and the elements, uh, you know, took its toll on the equipment and the um, props and, and, and everything that was... Well, here's another thing as well. I mean, if they were going to stage this, I mean, do you really think NASA would be that stupid to make those kind of clumsy, stupid mistakes? Come on, Paul. Come on, Globebusters. Wake up, please. It was involved. Yeah. Yeah. When you're looking at the, the other photographs associated with this particular flag, which are the, the, the two astronauts standing beside it, being shot, uh, beside it, that, that shot there, um, you can see the mud on them. Well, mud mud on the astronauts. No, as I said previously, there is no mud. There is no moisture at all on the surface of the moon. There is water somewhere in the moon, but it's underneath the surface and it will be in the form of ice. So no, there is no mud. That is moon dust. It's a very fine dust uh, and the particles are very jagged and even and it clings to everything. Well, when you look at the whole series through, these guys are just picking up mud and putting it on each other's suits. Okay, and then of course there they've washed it off for the shot and you can see that the suit's still wet. And No, the suit's not wet. And uh, that's Harrison Smith in, in the, that particular photograph. It says Cernan. Um, Paul, myself and Marcus Allen are the only ones that know the difference on who's who on it and uh, we left it up there to see if anybody would even notice uh, uh, which which uh, astronaut is which I mean uh, most people can only name one or two uh, astronauts that landed on the moon so the difference between the, the two in the uh, Apollo 17 is really doesn't make any difference who that is both of them are covered in mud both of them no, you're right, it doesn't make any difference who it is because they're not covered in mud. It's moon dust. Simple as that, it's moon dust. We're showing off that it's a fraud. And uh, they're just basically a couple of boys having fun with some uh, very expensive toys. <sighs> toys that have cost, yeah, very expensive toys. Toys that have actually made some very, very important experiments and very, very important measurements. But no, of course, they're toys, aren't they? Yeah, right. Yep. Yeah, that's that is absolutely amazing. Yeah, I, there's no way that I could ever tell. Um, you know, obviously, I know Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong, um, you know, Tom Hanks, those astronauts. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the the commander, don't forget Kevin Bacon. The commander has the red stripe on his suit. Uh, I'll accept uh, Neil Armstrong, he was the commander, he doesn't have a red stripe on his suit, but the rest of them, the commander has a red stripe, and the, the lunar module pilot uh, doesn't. Yeah, uh, you, you, you think that the, uh, the flag is wet? Is yeah, that what? Well, absolutely. It looks that way. <laughs> wet. Um, that sounded a little bit like um, Bob Mandel, yeah, it looks that way. It looks that way. They've got no demonstrable proof whatsoever. The flag or anything else or the astronauts or the suits are not wet. Okay. I, I'm just, I, so it's like, I mean, I see what you're saying, how they their suits kind of look a little bit wet too, but like, is there any other shots where... I keep saying the suits look wet. How do they look wet? There's something they seem to be missing. They're not. They're not analysing or looking at the suits at all. They're just saying, "Oh, they look wet." 
where you can conclusively see any water flowing or well there's a shot it's there. hard to see yeah i don't know you i you saw this one john right this is the first one let me zoom it in a little bit but this one it's very obvious especially along here that this is this is wet through and through no it's not it's you very obvious that this is wet. oh yeah yeah i do see it yep yeah i couldn't get a good again once again that flag is made of nylon nylon can be shiny or is shiny and can be quite reflective so the camera the camera will only pick up an exposure of a certain amount of sunlight so it's picking up areas that are less shaded than others because of the only source of sunlight so in, in all the creases there's those lines that you're seeing are just creases nothing more nothing less they are creases view of it before yeah and a couple other shots as well where you can see that it appears that something has gotten wet some of the equipment and then it has dried and has again they're using the word appeared to get wet or appeared to dry out no left you know what what it looks like is mud that has dried um and there was a shot that you had there earlier bob um, yeah i'm gonna find it there and that was uh and that was equipment that was used over and over again you know for all of these what you know what i think was used over and over again based on this analysis and you know the deterioration of the equipment over time is is obvious because of the weather uh -huh. absolutely and the one i think it's in this one i may not have that other one but it is one of these that shows the water and it is near the bottom and i can't yeah. I, scott what is the what is this this right is it there. just passed it oops i did right well, those those two there one showing mold on the on the left hand side of that uh where the left arrow is you can see where it's like the, the it's foil so everything is wrinkled except that one spot there it's absolutely perfectly flat so there's water lying in it oh <sighs> it's not absolutely perfectly flat there's i mean it's this pretty much crinkles all over it i don't really know what they're trying to indicate here um there i see nothing wet i see no uh, reflection of water of any kind on here um, and also as well if you think about it if there was water or if the little pools of water on there I mean there's dust everywhere I mean that water will be muddy and dirty and murky and all the rest of it as well but I see no evidence all I see is moon dust that's it nothing more nothing less all they're saying is that's what it looks like well to me it doesn't look like anything and I know that there's no water on the moon and then on the other arrow, you can see where the, the water is dried back. There's actually green mold around the outside of it and the mud. No, that's no, there's no, 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 no. That's not green mold. That's just an anomaly in the camera of the photograph. That green that you see there, I mean, it's everywhere, all of that. I doubt think very much within a day or so that this mold is going to grow. So no, that is not mold at all. It doesn't even look anything like mold. It's caked onto it. And that's exactly what happens when water evaporates. Those aren't little pictures. Those are, those aren't even blown up. Those are the actual pictures, the way they are. And I don't know why anybody looking through there couldn't see that. I mean, the, like if if you take a, a piece of tin foil and rip it off and set it on your barbecue and take a picture of it, it's going to look pretty clean. And that's exactly what they were doing when they set this equipment up. They took the photograph right away of it. It's not like it was laying around, and this stuff was supposed to be prepared in a clean room. Yeah, now this, this to me looks like, you know, you've got, like, leftovers from water here. You see this? this well, looks like it's so wet. Yeah. It's so wet. when If you look at the uh, backdrop, the so-called mountain, in, in this, when you're going through the Apollo 17 photos, as the ground in front dries out, then it starts to match the background. So Golf balls, really? I mean, do you really think that NASA, if they're going to fake something like this, that they would actually leave golf balls on a set they're trying to fake? But also, if you look at this scene here, if now if this is supposed to be a setup outside, okay, how are they going to create this reflected, lit up 
area with a mountain in the background. How are they going to light that kind of area with that kind of light, with that kind of reflection? And again, going back to the sky, how were they going to darken the sky? They didn't have the technology in those days. CGI did not exist in 1972, Paul. And the rest of you Globusters. Wise up. So when you go back two, three, two or three magazines further on, they'll match up in color. Yeah. But when I now it's just as again go, going back to those marks that they pointed out there as well. That I mean, to me, they just look like the tracks from the rover. It's as simple as that. There, there's just there's just um, a tracks or from something. Whether it be tracks from the rover or the equipment they were dragging around, all sorts of things. There was equipment everywhere. They were doing a lot of experiments. But there's no golf balls on the moon. It's so blatantly different. Start in color, and that's why the footprints are so much darker as well. And it's the same as if you were walking in sand or anything else, right? Yeah. Or any any dirt when you kick it up, it's darker underneath as it starts to dry on top. Yeah. That particular photograph, they must have been shooting quite a few golf balls around because there's quite a number of them out there. Why in the heck would they try and fake a moon landing and throw golf balls all over the place? Please explain that to me, Bob. And Paul and the rest of you Globusters, please explain that to me. Why the hell would you want to fire golf balls over a faked moon landing set. Do you really think that they would do that? Deluded. They're on that set. Yeah, there's a ton of them. The other thing that strikes me, of course, is um, right along the little plus marks here where the Hasselblad um, has the plus marks, you can clearly see this bifurcation mark in between the foreground and the background that, I mean, it, it is so obvious that they are so blatantly different that how anybody could not look at that and go, come on, really? perspective all you're actually seeing there that mark there actually is over that it's kind of like over a high and it goes down into a dip or a hollow or a crater or whatever it is and then that mountain actually is back in the background that's as simple as that that's all that is that is so obvious that's just ridiculous to say something like that stupid i mean it's it's not even a good blending job they didn't even try well blending job really well then provide evidence that it's a blending job go because yeah. it they, they would have had the ground closer. Like, if the ground wasn't wet, it's a much closer match. Yeah, but in this case it was wet, so it made it a little bit darker. That's right. And, and if you go through uh, two or three magazines later, then this particular same, same spot is much lighter. It's much closer to the background as it dries out. Yeah. Yeah, not surprising. And, of course, then we have mud on the wheels from the rover which i thought was pretty crazy no again not mud dust and you know and then earlier the mud on the suit so i'm just curious um scott if you know when you show people like for example the uh mud on the space suits uh that we were looking at earlier let's just read what it says down here it's here an anomaly is to be found in photos of the same wheel on missions 15, 16, and 17. What anomalies are they then? The same rover appears to have been used for Apollo, Apollo shoots 15, 16, and 17. A key feature that confirms this finding is a persistent oil leak. An oil leak? Oh. From the rear axle on the left side of the vehicle, right? There's no, no, there's no oil in the in the axle. I'm pretty sure of that. As a result of this oil leak, dirt and dust adhere to the oil that remain highly visible on the wheel hub as well as on the rear itself. No, there's no oil there at all. It's dust. It's moon dust. It's as simple as that. And it's going to cling to something like that. Of course it is. Okay. Um, what do they say when they look at that? I mean, what, what excuse do they make when you're saying, look, there's the mud right there on the spacesuit. Let me get to this. Whoops, there it was. When they, when they look at this, you know, what excuse do they have for that? Do they just say, well, it's just regular dirt or, or regular dirt? No, Bob, it's moon dust. 
you know what Bob go and have a look or Paul or whoever go and have a look and find out how moon dust particles actually look and then you might understand why it's clinging clinging sorry clinging to the spacesuit uh, the, I haven't heard anybody t tell me that it's it's well I'm gonna stop it there because they just they just just start going over the same stuff over and over and over again they're making claims that they have no substantiated or no demonstrative um, proof of at, at all whatsoever okay not to mention as I've mentioned before between 1969 and 1972 between the from the first moon landings to the next to the last one in 72 in December of Apollo 17 CGI did not exist they weren't even close to producing anything CGI not only that they simply did not or nobody had the technology the camera technology or the reproduction technology or the techniques in order to reproduce a fake moon landing it just did not happen that to me is the smoking gun as I've said that in a previous video it was impossible so to rephrase as well the flag is made of nylon it is shiny those wet marks that they think are wet is not wet they are crease marks nothing more nothing less that's probably one of the easiest parts of this video to debunk well there it is Paul on the plane you set me a challenge but actually it wasn't much of a challenge because that one was really easy to debunk well I'll tell you what Paul on the plane if you want to set me the next challenge pick any one of your videos and I will debunk it so there's your challenge so that only leaves me to say thank you very 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 much for coming to my channel and watching this video if you like the video please like below and if you like my content please subscribe and hit the bell icon and you'll be notified when I upload my next videos. So that only leaves me one more thing to say and that is science is truth.